I think sometimes even in Christian music and in Christian circles, we're not that great at holding together the truth that life is really hard and God is really good. We think we have to be like, God is really good and not let people know life is still really, really hard or life is so hard, God must not be good. But I'm like, no, both of these things are true. And if I don't hold both of these things firmly and see the truth of those, I'm not going to be able to make sense of the world around me. Thank you for tuning in to Trevor Talks Podcast, where we talk to real people about real topics and real stories. Today's guest is an author, teacher, hip-hop artist, and thought leader. In his career, he's racked up Stellar Award, a Dove Award, and has had multiple number one albums and played in front of thousands all over the world. And to be quite honest with you, my inner teen is freaking out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Trip. Lee Trip, dude, we're actually here. We made it. That's right. We made it. Thanks for we having made me. Man. It. Dude, of course. Thank you for coming on. And it it feels like maybe 20, it feels like 20 minutes ago I was in the car jamming out the rise and <laughs> I actually was. But it <laughs> that album in particular is just such a healing and nostalgic album to listen to. You know, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I grew up on Notorious B.I.G. and all that. And I'm like, I've got Lecrae, Andy Mineo, Trip Lee, you know, yeah. I grew up in the 116 scene. I used to, yeah. when I had my first job at Chick-fil-A, I dropped my whole paycheck on Reach Records merch. So wow. like, we were, uh, I had a 116 outfitted closet, you know what I'm saying? Wow. See, I, I feel honored, <laughs> man. Uh, I was, there was all kind of stuff that was less worthy that I was wasting my Albertsons, my grocery store paychecks on when I was a teenager. So that's dope, man. I appreciate no. that. No, for sure, dude. And I really want to dive into this single that you just had come out on the Reach Record Summer playlist, man. Tell us yeah. a little bit about it and what the message is. Yeah, so it's a song called You Got It. Uh came out on the, the, the Reach Summer playlist, which came late summer. So people were like, can this still be summer? But um, yeah, I mean, it's a song that uh, I was really excited about. Um, and the, the really the theme of the song is... You know, in the verses, I'm talking about all the stuff that I could do and some of the, you know, the stuff that people expect from public figures, too. You know, I might give me a beam. I might try to do this rich stuff. I might try to pretend like I'm a gangster. I might do all these things, which will get me all this acclaim. Um, and then at the end of the verses, it just keeps coming back to. But I think I need something more to that. And uh, there's this passage in the Gospels where um, Jesus basically says something hard. Everybody leaves, looks at the disciples. He's like, hey, where are y'all about to leave too? And they're essentially like, I don't even know where else I could, where else can we go? We, You have the words of life. And so that is a passage that always stuck with me. It always meant a lot to me because it um, it, it kind of helps show, shows what's at stake in, in me throwing everything at the feet of Jesus. So, um, so yeah, I, I thought I've always wanted to turn that into a song. And, um, and yeah, I'm, re I'm really happy with, with this record. Well, the song is phenomenal, but the music video articulates everything in such a way that it's yeah. like, for you, for Trip Lee, like you've got the low key style, you've always got on the Yankees hat, like it's a super <laughs> chill thing, and you got people trying to throw Gucci on you, you've got right. these luxury cars, <laughs> and it's like, it seems like it's extravagant for you, but yeah. if you really look into some of these, especially hip hop videos, that's literally what they're doing. Yeah. And yeah. And, you know, even in the song, you know, there's a playfulness to it, you know, and some of the stuff I'm saying in the verses, this is overboard, you know, it's, you yeah. know, I might throw a charity benefit and keep all the money. I might do all of this stuff, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's not really going to get me anywhere. So when we were talking about the video, I was like, look, we're going to do it. Let's go all the way. Let's, let's, uh, let's get a car. Let's get some, let me sit on the throne of money. Let's get some, some fake cocaine bricks like let's do the rapper things and uh try to use that to to show the yeah the point of the song yeah and for the message of the song why right now like why was 2021 the time for this message is there something specific that was going on in your life to where you're like man like i really got to put this out right now you know it's it, it really has been a passage that's always stuck with me that i really wanted to because i think there's so much stuff you know, that I see in scripture about who God is that, um, that I think if we really looked at it, we would see how it resonated with us. I mean, you know, the disciples in a place where it's like, it's hard to follow Jesus. He just said something that's hard. Often when people are like, I don't know about following God. He want me to do this. He don't want me to do this. 
And the disciples were at a place where it's like, yes, what he just said is hard. But on the other end, he has something that I can't get anywhere else. So where else am I going to go? Because you have what I need. Um, And so I wanted that to connect with people. And I think, you know, and this is with a lot of the stuff I've been writing right now, we are in a place just culturally. It's been a really hard couple of years, you know, and um, there's so many hopes and dreams and stuff we thought was going to go one way that hasn't really gone that way. Um, that I think really connects well with, you know, kind of where my heart has been with the music that I've been trying to write. And I've always tried to write stuff, uh, yeah, that's honest about difficulties about what it, what it means to live in this world. And so I, I, I hope my music keeps doing that. And I hope the song did that for people. It did, for sure. Yeah. And you're one of the founding members in 116. Like, yeah. that's a big deal. It's almost like, okay... This dude's on the pinnacle of like if there were a Mount Rushmore for Christian <laughs> rap and for me, hip hop, you'd be on it. And for so many young kids that are coming right now and they're like, you could record songs in your house. A lot of professional musicians have studios in their homes now. Yeah. What What is your encouragement for them? Like it's a whole new generation of just unashamed kids. I saw a kid at a show we did the other day. He had a 116 hat and I asked him about yeah. it and he was impacted by the music. So for yeah. me personally and millions across the globe, what does it mean to you to be a part of this clique still unashamed here in 2021? Oh man, it means, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, <laughs> when people say something like, oh man, we grew up listening to you. I'm like, oh man, it makes me feel kind of old. You know, <laughs> so even though I was the, the young buck, uh, you know, I was in high school when I met these dudes, you know, um, so it, it, uh, it, it feels amazing. I, I love what we built. It's, it's funny sometimes because we weren't setting out to build some big thing. Right. We was just like, hey, we love God. We love hip hop. Let's let's rap. We don't like some of the stuff rappers are saying. Let's talk about where we at. Let's push back against some of the stuff that we don't think is good, you know. This for me, even as like stuff that music did for me that impacted me in unique seasons. And those are some of the stories I love to hear the most with people like, man, I um, first show I did after um, I hadn't done anything for a super long time because of the pandemic. The very first show I did, um, um, there's a girl who came up to me after the show and she said, hey, I can't count the number of times where you saved my life, where I felt like taking my life and your music actually helped me to change my mind and helped me to see things in a little bit of a different way. And she said that to me, looked me in the eyes very sincerely, said thank you and walked off. And, um, you know, that's that's the type of stuff that for me is like you, I just don't always know the way that music is impacting people. I can't always see that. I, I don't know all the stories that I don't know, but stuff like that makes me, um, you know, very grateful to to get to be a part of this. And, and I hope, you know, the Lord continues to use it. And I hope that some of the stuff we did you know, blaze the trail for other people. And, um, and yeah, and I'm excited for, for this new season for me too. You know, I'm, I'm far from, from being done. So I'm also excited about what's next for us. Yeah. And I mean, if you even look at the reach catalog right now, you've got Holvey, one up RG, one K few, like we're actively seeing these kids living out their dreams and they used to have your poster on their wall and now they're making music with you. So like a funny thing about you getting into it in high school, man, it's like, my first national tour was in high school. It was Outcry 2015, okay. which you were on. And yeah, yeah. it was like, that was the thing that showed me like, okay, if you want to do this whole extravagant journey for Jesus, like how far are you willing to go? I missed over 180 days of high school, my senior wow. year, um, interning with Nick Hall, like doing all these fun things. And yeah, yeah, it was like, are you willing to drop like prom and homecoming and all that? And I was like, I don't care. Like, let's get out here and do it. But so many kids are willing to chase this music thing now and even just chase Jesus. It's super encouraging. And I did forget to say, I didn't answer all of your questions in terms of advice for people who who are trying to do it. It's like, you know, when I was first starting, I recorded like a little mixtape in my room, but look, it was not, it was much harder to do that. I'll just, I'll just say it like that. It was much more difficult to do that. There were less ways for me to get music out. Um, it was a whole different situation. So there are amazing, yeah, there's amazing ways to kind of get going. And sometimes I'll talk to people that'll be like, nah, man, I can't wait to do that. You know, as soon as I, as soon as, you know, I can raise this money to go buy this thing, then I'm going to start doing my music thing. Or as soon as I like meet a couple people and I'm always trying to encourage people like, hey, the dudes who say that 
to me are usually the people who you look up 10 years from now and there's still more things that they can point to. And for me, it was like, I was even in a little uh, group when I was real young and basically we was just dragging our feet. And I was like, well, look, I'm about to just do it myself then. Like there's all kinds of stuff we can wait on, but just go after like whatever you have in front of you, make the most of that. And then when you have more stuff at your disposal, then you'll, you'll be ready to go. So I just want to encourage people if, if you think you have beautiful art to, 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 you know, to put out there in the world or you got things to say or you got stuff you want to make and you think it would encourage people, challenge people, like find a way to, to do what you can do. And then, you know, don't wait for other people to put the opportunities in front of you. Make those opportunities and, and yeah, walk through open doors when they're there. Yeah. And even to highlight you a little bit, when you were coming up in the music scene, there was barely like, I doubt YouTube was around when you were in high school and such, right? Or it was just coming maybe. And yeah, like, yeah, I, I didn't have like, I never put any bad songs on SoundCloud. You know, there's one way where it's like, hey, make sure when yeah. you put something up, it's out there. But, you know, like my bad mixtape wasn't on SoundCloud or wasn't, uh, you know, I, I didn't have wasn't on YouTube, wasn't easy ways to get it out. So there's some ways I benefited from that. I was at least yeah. a little bit more fully formed when people first was hearing me. But um, Yeah, and even Distro Kids, CD Baby, like you just put your stuff on Apple Music, Spotify now. It hadn't always been that way. That's it right. used to be that's you right. had to have a manager, you had to have an agent, you had to get with a label. If you want distribution yeah. globally, you got to do this, that, and the other. And it's like, that's right. now you got it pretty good. Like these kids that's out right. here blowing up on tiktok there definitely wasn't tiktok but right. man like god's done such miraculous things through you and your story alone in its own right is super unique so i really want to dive into what that looked like for you like from childhood up before you met the 116 guys before you even started making music like what was life like for you yeah um that's a big question um, you know, grew up in Dallas, which is where I live now. That's where I'm at now. I'm in my uh kind of office studio at home. Um, grew up in Dallas, uh both my parents and the house had great parents, um, raised us well. Uh loved music from a really young age. My dad was a music lover, so he was just always playing music all the time and good music. Like he put me on put us on the good stuff. Uh Stevie Wonder, Earth on the Fire, you know, Sly and the Family Stone, like classic, excellent music. Um, and was always like, ah, you don't want to hear, you know, your generation, what y'all doing, this is what, you know, what real music is type stuff, which I'm sure I would do to my kids when the time comes. Um, but that just gave me a love for music at a very young age. And, you know, when you look at the stuff you love, you try to do yourself. You love basketball, I did. So I tried to play basketball, baseball, whatever. I also tried to do music. We rap with my friends all the time. Um, I assumed that I was a Christian from a really young age just because I repeated a prayer after the children's pastor one time. And I thought, oh, that makes me a Christian. Um, but I don't think I was because I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't understand who God was or what my relationship, why why my relationship with God would have been strained at all or why I really needed a savior to take me back to him. Um, when I was so in middle school, me and my friends always rapping, freestyle battling at lunch, getting in trouble. Uh, writing rhymes and little notebooks in class, getting in trouble. Um, and there did come a time when I was like, I think I might be a little better than them, or at least I take it more seriously or it means more to me. And then um, when I'm like 14 years old, I, I think that's when I meet Jesus, when I like, oh, I'm not a very good Lord in my life. Like there are ways I've led myself astray. And there's actually no way for me to pay the penalty of my own sins or get myself back to God because I've got myself in this mess and God has sent a savior to take me to him that clicks. Um, and, you know, I still uh, struggle, but my perspective on life begins to change. My life begins to change and that impacts every area of my life. So I'm like, oh, man, that should change how I'm interacting with these girls. That should change how I'm interacting with my parents, what I'm doing in school, um, which is a bumpy road. But for me also, it was like, oh, what about my music? Like, at that point, I'm just rapping about how dope I think I am, how many girls I can pull, greatest rap of all time, whatever stuff. And uh, and yeah, so, I, you know, as I start listening to, to rappers who are rapping in ways that more life-giving and stuff that, that helped me understand things about the world and about God. I'm like, I want to do that for other people. So I started, um, yeah, I started doing that. I was like rapping and whatever opportunities I had in my church some, and I wasn't good, but they still let me do it. Um, yeah. And, and then, um, I met 
do some reach when I was uh, 15, I think. Um, and, and yeah, long story short, you know, linked up with them, built a relationship with them and, and, you know, ended up signing a record deal with Reach before I graduated high school during my senior year. And that's when I did my first record was, uh, when I was senior in high school. So, wow. And yeah. when did your faith become real for you? Like, I know you started going to youth group to meet girls, but when did, that's right. when did this really come into play for your life? Yeah. You know, I did start going to youth group trying to meet girls, uh, Bad motivations, but um, God is uh, sovereign even over that stuff. And he, um, when I started going, um, yeah, I had a good youth pastor, man. I mean, he's actually a friend now back in Dallas. He's a um, good friend. Um, And he, yeah, I mean, gospel's being preached. So I'm starting to see stuff. And so around that time when I'm 14, that's when the gospel clicks that, oh, I need a savior. And that's how I'm forgiven of my sins. And that's how I can have new life. And so from that point on, stuff starts to change. I started to read the Bible um, soon after that. I had had a Bible before. My grandma gave me a Bible. It was like the children children of color Bible. And so it was like King James. I couldn't understand nothing. Whenever I tried to read it, it was like pictures of all these biblical characters. Everybody was super black. Solomon had like dreads and braids. And, um, uh, you know, so I, I, I was like, oh, here are these cool. It was also like random African kings and queens, you know, so it was like this is just a story and I couldn't understand none of it. You know what I'm saying? So when I uh, put my faith in Jesus for real and then I start reading the Bible, I read something in James. I don't even remember what it was. Something happened to me the next day. And what I read applied to the situation. And I it just blew me away. I, I was like, whoa, like what God says in this old book says something to my life right now. Um, and that changed my life. And, um, so yeah, I mean, there were people that God just kept sending to my life to help me, my youth pastor. And then I met the crane them. And, and that's been a lot of my story throughout my life is the Lord has sent people into my life to pour into me, uh, who helped me to grow, helped me to mature, helped me to understand God, all kind of stuff. So I, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And now you're a father of two. You got three. your wife. Three now. I got three Dad, kids. Dumb, That's right. I got a one year old. Got a house. Yeah, I, full, I was surprised man. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about you that I really admire and can relate with is you struggle with chronic fatigue. So yeah, yeah. With being a father of three now, one year old, that's like having two there for a while, you know? <laughs> like it's yeah, busy, yeah. busy times. Right. How how do you balance like your church life, your family life, and then diving back into music all while struggling with chronic fatigue syndrome? Yeah, man. You know, I wish, I wish I had like a very pretty picture to paint of how I figured out how to make it all work, but I really don't, you know, it's, it's different from season to season. You know, there's some seasons where it's harder than others. It is and has been for the last, um, you know, at this point, about 15 years, it's been the hardest part of every part of my life. And in different seasons, it impacts me in different ways. Um, but really, man, it is me trying to I have an incredible wife who uh, I couldn't have known how amazing of a wife she was when I married her. I would like to be like, man, I, I saw it. I knew the kind of mom she was going to be and I knew how strong she would be. But, you know, we didn't know all of these things that would happen. So I'm super grateful for her. And in each season, we are always trying to reevaluate and say, okay, here's what's on our plate. What does it look like for us to be faithful in this? This feels like too much. Is this just a season? Is this something we need to change? Um, and it's been, for me, there's been a lot of things that I thought would go particular ways that did not go that way. And that is one of the things that, um, yeah, one of the things about having a chronic illness that that is unpredictable, that's not even understood that well is, yeah, I mean, when uh, in James, when uh, um, yeah, when when he's like, you know, you say you're gonna go into town and do this the next day, and he's basically like, you, you, I mean, you're being a fool. Your life is a vapor. You should say, I'm gonna do this if the Lord wills. And that phrase, Lord willing, which sometimes we just get tagged on the stuff, is just a, a nice, cute Christian phrase, uh, means more to me than than, it, than certainly than it did when I was um, younger. It's like. I, I know I have plans. I know here are the steps I'm trying to take towards something. But at the end of the day, it's in the Lord's hands. And so I just got to hold stuff with open hand and I got to try my best to be faithful. And some seasons I'm like, Shh, 
great season. Some seasons I'm like, this is a disaster. Lord, help us to kind of put stuff in a new, help us organize this differently and try best to be faithful. And there are a lot of times where I'm just like, I don't know, but I'm going to just try to put my head down and be faithful and, and, and trust that the Lord can work this out. So, yeah. Man, that's so deep. And yeah. out on outcry and then a few of the winter jam dates, I always made sure I was out in the crowd when you would start doing sweet victory just because for you as an artist, like people don't realize they think tour like you just wake up, go do a show, you can go back to sleep, do whatever you want. But yeah. for someone like you that's struggling with chronic fatigue and on top of having a family that you can't really take out with you, you're away from your family, you're out of your home, you're sleeping on a bus, you don't sleep that good in buses, like you sleep, but it's sleep, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, every single night when you did Sweet Victory, it just helped me find this newfound appreciation for what you were out there doing. And uh, there's some of the lines in that song that really stuck with me. It's like, even as I write these lines, I'm close to tears. My body ain't been working right for seven years. It hit, hits me with that, keep your chin up, try to smile, bro. Um, and you were 26 at the time. I should feel better yeah. by a mouth. Yeah, keep your, yeah. all your inner notes and cute quotes. I pass on cliches for that. And no, I ain't going to get into it. But that yeah, whole I'm going to just line, let you fill in for me, Trevor. Hey, Next hey, time I got a show, you got it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like that song in particular, though, it's like that's vulnerability and you can feel it. And even with Dimitri and the lady you had on yeah. the song with you, like, that is a masterpiece on its own. Mm. And God used that, that to hit me. And I don't even want to know how many other people, I mean, I do, but I don't because then I'm going to be like, dang, I need those kind of views, you know, like, but <laughs> it's so vulnerable and honest. And it's like, you really allowed God to use you within that as you have with all your music, but this in particular, that's deep. How did did you have any experiences writing that song where you're like, man, I can't put this out. Like, I don't want people to view me as I'm weak or this or that. What did that yeah. songwriting process look like? Um, me and Gavi worked on that song together. So I, you know, we we um I had some like references for him where I wanted to go production wise, wanted to feel kind of cinematic. I wanted it to start first half of the song, no drum. So we had some very specific things I wanted musically. Gavi did an incredible job. Um, um, wrote the hook with Natalie Lauren and the um, the worship spot part at the end that Leah Smith is singing. Um, and, you know, Joseph Perlazny did string arrangement. Like, there's stuff about that record that when I got it back, the, the final mix, I think it's been one of the few times where I got a final mix and I was like, this is something special. And... Not just like, oh, cool. By the time you like mix and stuff, you're so tired of hearing everything. But that one just felt special. As I was writing it, I mean, really the experience I had writing it, I wasn't worried about being vulnerable. Um, you know, I uh, I don't really know how else to be, man. I don't really know how to be honest. Um, I don't know how not to be fake while not yeah. being honest about where I'm at. I, I don't know. Um, and sometimes I'm like, I don't want people in that. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, whatever. I just don't know how else to be, honestly. And I I think sometimes even in Christian music and in Christian circles, we're not that great at holding together the truth that life is really hard and God is really good. We think we have to be like, God is really good and not let people know life is still really, really hard or life is so hard, God must not be good. But I'm like, no, both of these things are true. And if I don't hold both of these things firmly and see the truth of those, I'm not going to be able to make sense of the world around me. Um, and even as I was writing that song, literally, I, uh, yeah, like that was one of the songs that was just really hard for me to finish up and get out because it was towards the end of a process and I was running out of gas and just kind of barely got it. Um, so that song means a lot to me. And it's one of the songs that I hear from people the most about ways that it's impacted them. Um, and it just makes me really grateful to, yeah, I'm, you know, it's crazy to like write songs at my house, in my room, in my office. And the ways that the Lord will use it for people, you know, it, it blows me away. And, you know, I'm just grateful for those opportunities to do it. Yeah. And you and Gavi, like, that's a monumental record all on its own rise in general from the cover art to the book. I mean, you touch on so many different topics in the stories within the album on a uh, guy contemplating cheating on his wife all the way down to you struggling with chronic fatigue. Like, yeah there's a little bit of everything in that yeah. and just shout out to you on that and then you went into the waiting room which you got your dove award on 
And God's just really been amazing thing, doing amazing things through your music. For how long have you been a musician? It's going on two decades or more. Oh man, don't say that. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, my first my first album came out two thousand six. You know, so that's yeah. fifteen years ago. Um, so yeah, man, I'm I'm very very grateful, and and I and I'll say like. It's rare for artists to get to do this for this long, especially somebody like me who keeps disappearing. Um, but yeah, in 2011 or 12, you're like, nah, I'm done with music. And then you came back with the best album ever. And I'm <laughs> like, all right, man, keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And, you know, it's been a while since Waiting Room came out, too. And, you know, I'm, I'm working on new music that I'm very, very excited about. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful that people still care. I'm grateful that people have been impacted by stuff and Lord willing, they'll continue to be. Uh, and I don't assume that I will always have the platform that I have had and I do have every moment I have it is a gift. It's mercy from God. Every opportunity I have, every time somebody wants to have an interview with me is a gift. It's a mercy from God. I don't, I'm not owed none of this. So I want to be faithful as long as those doors are open and yeah, just try to keep making stuff that impacts people. Well, I'm so glad it's a gift when people ask for interviews because you best know I texted Jackie and I was like, look, <laughs> this has to happen. And yeah. she's amazing. And uh, yeah. man, as we kind of wrap this up, like I like to ask questions and really have conversations on things that are going to be encouraging to people, but also help them grow spiritually in their faith, yeah. with their family, just their everyday life. So when it comes down to it, if someone's watching or listening to this right now and they're struggling through mental health, maybe they're feeling suicidal, maybe they're struggling with chronic fatigue syndrome themselves, what would the message from Trip Lee be to them? Um, yeah, I think part of it for me would be um, a reminder that hard seasons doesn't mean that God is gone. Um, that there is a real God who um, who not it's not only like he's not annoyed when you bring your situations to him like he he commands you to bring that to me like you don't try to carry that by yourself bring it to me I'll carry that burden for you he, he commands us to hand those over to him and he says I'll get in there with you the clearest example being Jesus puts on human flesh and comes to this crazy earth lives the perfect life that we couldn't live the feet you know like there's a god who has done everything to show you like in tough like it's not like he's not with you he is and and he'll walk in that with you um and there's a especially for someone with chronic illness um there there's a very it's very isolating it's very alienating from other people and it can certainly feel like no one really understands it can feel like even the people who want to understand can't fully cuz they're not in it um and it is uh encouraging for me to remember like now the, the lord is in this with me um he understands it far better than i even do um and sometimes that's enough yeah well if you're listening to this you heard it from Tripoli himself keep pressing on know that god's got a plan for your life we love y'all so much and trip thank you so much for taking time to be with me today this has uh been quite refreshing and one of the bucket list items just got checked off right here on Trevor <laughs> Talks. If you've tuned in and made it this far in the interview, thank you so much for your support. Uh, be sure to check out all the links in the description for the waiting room, for You Got It, for all trips records. We'll put the link for social media and everything in there as well. And uh, keep pressing on. Know that God loves you and he has such an amazing purpose for you. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye now.